Lord, why couldn't you give me a few more hours in my day? Mm. And I know that that isn't his plan. It isn't his design. And he, you know, he did it the way he did it so that we would sleep and eat and, and get stuff done. Ever been overwhelmed? Ever find yourself saying, I don't have any idea where to start or I'm at my breaking point? Well, hold on. We know the feeling too. I'm Bree, along with my mom, Dee. And we know where to find some answers that really will help. Despite how it feels, you were made for this. And when you follow God's plan and learn a little about how he designed your brain, there's hope. And that's next on A Home That Heals. Well, Bree, you're used to this because you've grown up with me. <laughs> so you know I go through seasons of just being overwhelmed. I do it to myself. And it's usually I'm overwhelmed with too many good things. Mm. And I feel blessed because I have so many good things that I love to do and want to do, but I always end up getting into this place where I just really, I just have a sick stomach because I don't know how I'm going to get everything done. And I've bit off more than I can chew. And I'm saying things to myself like, um, I'm never going to get out from under this. I am never, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, oh, I, I feel like I'm drowning sometimes mm. or... Mm. I, I'm just spinning my wheels. I can't seem to get anywhere. And I, my prayer <laughs> that the Lord's heard way too many times, Lord, why couldn't you give me a few more hours in my day? Mm. And I know that that isn't his plan. It isn't his design. And he, you know, he did it the way he did it so that we would sleep and eat and, and get stuff done. But it's something I'm really struggling with right now. So why not do a podcast on it? Oh, exactly. Mm. When in doubt, <laughs> that's podcast. What, <laughs> that's right. And I think, friends, I really do think that that's one of the cool things about doing a podcast is it is a way that you spend time really reflecting on your challenges and and then thinking back, okay, what's worked before? And then looking for new resources that can help you to be um, more equipped to handle it better. So I thought we'd just chat about that today. I think that is such a good idea because feeling overwhelmed seems to be a feeling that ebbs and flows. You know, it it's like you've never completely reached that, oh, aha, I figured out how to never be overwhelmed again. Right. Life just right. happens. Yeah. It does. Oh, you know, doesn't it always? It piles up. And it's, it seems like the more sometimes I try to schedule things, the more things just crop up that mm. I don't have any control over. And then that just throws everything out of whack. But I did read a book a long time ago, It was something about margin. And a lot of you will probably remember it because it was real popular for a while. And it was like living your life with margin so that you can fit those things in that just happen and just come up. But I've never mastered that, I will admit it. But there are some things that I have learned over the years that have really helped and that I always go back to. And you were uh, doing kind of your top three things to help you get your house more, you know, under control. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, these are sort of my top things to help get my, feeling of being overwhelmed under control. And so the first three are really, they really do boil down to just spiritual practices, you know, Mm. things that we should, we should, I'm going to should on ourselves now. We should do when we're feeling that. And the the first one is just to pray over everything. You know, there's something really interesting out there in the brain science world that explains how God made our brains. And I want to talk about that more, but, you know, we can always go to the Bible and we can find these really great truths that then later on are proven and shown by brain science that's coming along. It's like, oh yeah, you know, what? duh, you know, that should, that should work. And one of them uh, that I have always gone to, and I sometimes don't know how to pray, I'm always encouraged by Psalm 61, one through four, because this is a prayer that I can pray. <laughs> oh God, here it comes. Ready, friends? Oh God, listen to my cry, exclamation point. Hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the towering rock of safety, for you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Let me live forever in your sanctuary, safe beneath the shelter. I love that prayer. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's so rich in meaning, but it starts off with just a cry for help. Yeah. So we need help. We do. We can't do this all by ourselves. No. So when you cry for help, then you are starting on the right path. Mm -hmm. And then you're asking God to lead you to the towering rock of safety, a safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Are you sometimes your own worst enemy? When you read that, I almost said, 
what happens when you are the enemy? <laughs> yeah. Because you are just saying yes to everything and you're filling up your, your day to lead yourself to over, you know, this feeling of overwhelm. Yeah, so, yeah. that happens. That happens <laughs> a lot. And, but there, but there are other things out there too, that, mm-hmm. that crowd our minds, you know, mm-hmm. with worry. Mm-hmm. And so that's the hard thing. So this, the second thing would be to trust and to know that you can trust in God and that you're not alone in this. And so I'm just reminding myself, friends, as I'm going through this little list, I'm reminding myself, trust in the Lord with all my heart, lean not unto my own understanding and in all my ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct my paths. And that's, you know, that's a proverb. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mm-hmm. And then the third thing is to get your thinking right, mm. because it is so easy to get focused on the wrong things. And so getting back to just thinking correctly and thinking about the things God wants us to think about and how he wants us to hold every thought captive and think about, you know the list, babe. What is whatever is Yeah, right. whatever is true. Yes. Noble, right, pure, lovely, whatever is admirable. Mm-hmm. Is anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And that's such a beautiful list. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I used to do news, as many of you know. For 40 years, I did the news. And when I was a news anchor and a reporter, my days were filled with thinking about a lot of really awful things. And I'm finding that that isn't just a corner that news people own anymore. We are all, if you watch any news or if you're involved at all in the things that are happening in our world, then it is so easy to just be consumed by that Mm -hmm. and to forget that there really are lovely, pure, true, noble things that God can show you and that we can see. And that if we can somehow get that balance back, Mm -hmm. it helps us a lot with this feeling of being overwhelmed. That balance, I think, is so important. I've had so many conversations with friends about what an odd time we live in history. You know, for how long did people generally live where the knowledge that they had of what went on in the world was limited? You know, it was they they didn't know what was going on across their country all the time, every single day, every minute, every bad thing that happened wasn't broadcast to them. Over and over. over. And over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They knew what was happening in their village or their city. And, and you know, they would probably they'd get word of what was going on around them, but it wasn't this constant. We are living in a time where it is constant that we get the privilege of knowing every single horrible, awful, bad thing that goes on and most of it isn't even in our in our realm. Mm-hmm, <laughs> it's not mm-hmm. affecting us. Yeah. But it does affect us emotionally when we have to know about that. Mm-hmm. So I love that God reminds us that it is important to think about that, um, which is true and holy and good and righteous. Those are the things we should be filling our minds with. And frankly, we have to have discipline now to do that. Mm-hmm, you know, it, mm-hmm. it was probably much easier to do that back in the day. It is it's difficult now. We have to turn that off. We have to choose to not listen to what is untrue. We have to choose to not listen to what is is horrible and awful and and just depressing, frankly. Yeah, and you know, I always find a sort of an inner struggle with that because I don't want to be uninformed. Yeah. I want to know what's going on and I want to be able to speak truth into that. Mm-hmm. And I I really, I, you know, it's, it's funny because that old news person in me comes back, you know, who wants to say, well, listen, the news is a call to prayer because <laughs> it, it is. I know. But yeah. it's it's become too much, I think, in, yeah. in our in our culture. It's just become such a battle for your mind. And I think we should all be aware of that. Well, and I know we, we have this desire of, you know, wanting to be able to do something about it. How much of the time are we filling our minds with things and thinking and pondering about things that truly we can't really ever make a difference in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. When then it takes away from our home. Where you really where can. We can. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. That is so true. Well, those are the, okay, so those were the three, you know, spiritual aspects of this feeling of being overwhelmed. You know, pray over everything. Trust, trust in the Lord. He is the God that made you. He's the God that knows the answers to everything you're struggling with. And then to think right, get your thinking aligned with God's word. But I also wanted to tell you something that I found, because, you know, I have been on this very um, 
on and off love hate relationship with to-do lists <laughs> because to me a to-do list is just so practical it's so and when i do a to-do list it really helps me with feeling overwhelmed mm. now i don't have a verse for you that says thou shalt do a to-do list <laughs> but i want to tell you about something i just learned about and it came because i was looking at a book called getting things done this is a real uh, classic in the field of time management and productivity Um, by David Allen. So it's been out there. This book's been out there for a while. And he basically has this book on a to-do list sort of idea, only he takes it to another level. But here's what I found so interesting. In that book, he introduced me to something that I've been looking into more, and it's called the Zygernick effect. Have you ever heard of that? No. Mm -mm. I know. And I'm not sure I'm saying it right, but it's kind of cool. It was like back in the 1920s that this kind of started to be understood. And then there've been a lot of studies on it since. But it suggests that incomplete tasks, the things that you don't have done that are just kind of hanging out there that are making you feel, you know, overwhelmed, those unresolved goals, well, those are taking up your mental resources. Your brain is always, it's kind of like running in the background. Like, you know, when you have 50 programs open on your computer and it Mm -hmm. slows things down, kind of the same idea. It's, it's It's called a cognitive burden. And it leads to stress and anxiety and feeling overwhelmed. Oh, isn't imagine that. that. It, well, I know. But <laughs> so that just the act of writing those things down, writing a to-do list is an effective way to reduce that burden and that overload in your brain. And it just frees up mental space mm. for you to be more creative and to think more clearly. Now, wow. I don't know about you, and maybe I'm weird this way, but when I understand the reasons behind something, mm-hmm. it makes it easier for me to do it. Yeah. So, so this week, and this was hard to do because I am feeling so overwhelmed, but I just, I did a comprehensive list and it was like two and two and a half pages, single spaced of the different things in the different aspects of my life that I feel I'm thinking about all the time. I'm going, Oh no, did I do that? Oh dear. I need to do that. I want to do that. Oh, I miss doing that. You know, all that stuff that's kind of out there. And I wrote it down and I have to tell you, when I got done writing it down and then organizing it, and in his book, Getting Things Done, David Allen has his own strategy. Okay. I didn't like it so much. I have my own. Yeah. But yeah. I think everybody kind of has to come up with their own on how they organize their their yeah. list of things. But I started putting it into different categories. Like, for example, our little farm. Mm-hmm. My goodness, I have... a. <laughs> A big list. Yeah. I mean, how many things are we trying to accomplish out there this spring before it's summer? A lot. Yeah. And it, yeah, and it's, it is a lot. And it's it topped by weeds. <laughs> the <laughs> ever, never ending battle with weeds. My garden, which I've got to get, you know, I've got to get it planted. I mean, you can't plant in July, mm-hmm. although I've been known to do that sometimes. But um, so I want to get it planted. I want to get that done. But yet I've got a mess out there. You know, I've got my chicken coop out in the middle of all of that. We got to get that moved. And I don't know, so many things. But what, by writing it down, prioritizing, I mean, all the stuff that we all, it's common sense. Yeah. I mean, we could all probably write a book on it of some sort. Um, it just helps. But now that I understand that it, there's really a scientific thing that God designed our brains in a way that we should not be trying to manage all of that somehow up here. He wants us to be creative. He mm-hmm. wants us to be able to think clearly. And so this is a tool that that I believe we can use. And so I, it was kind of like Brie last week on her accountability thing with her <laughs> deal. I want some accountability partners here. So I'll ask you, Brie, yes. will you check in with me regularly to see if I've done a to-do list okay. and, and how I'm doing? Because the there's some very satisfying thing about checking off oh, something yes. on your to-do list. So I love that. That and then reviewing it and praying over your to-do list. That's okay. Friends, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. I think about this stuff. I worry about it. I stew about it. And, and I will say, Lord, help me. But you know what? Put that list in front of you and just ask, give it to God. Mm-hmm. Give that list to him and, and let him take control. Kind of like you were talking about with Ruby the horse last week, you know, you feel out of control, but when you when you have this ability to call on your creator, that alone should give us confidence that we don't have to be overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. I will hold you accountable. And I, I, I will tell you, I do this a lot with my grocery list. Mm. And, but I want to do it 
with more things because I there's so many things that do fill up my mind and I know it's taking away from the creativity I could have or just the clear thinking. It's very evident if you ever run into me and I try to speak with you and you sound like you're talking to a three-year-old because <laughs> it's hard for me to focus sometimes and clearly express my thoughts and ideas because my mind is going 100 miles an hour. But with the grocery store, I love my little app on my phone. That's the reminder app that was already on there. Mm -hmm. Because I tell you what, as I'm thinking about the food that we need in our house, I'll just, I have a grocery list already on there. I go to it. I add it on my grocery list. And there is nothing like when I'm at the grocery store and I'm going down that list and I get to click on it and it disappears. (laughs) It's just so rewarding. And then I get through all the aisles And there's nothing on there. Or maybe there's two things that that store didn't have, but it feels so rewarding. And so I wonder what would happen if I did that with more things. You Mm -hmm. know, if I had Mm -hmm. a little farm checklist and I had, you know, I already had my categories. So then when it comes into my mind, I can just add it to that list and delete it from my mind for a little bit so I can focus on something else. And you know, you don't have to worry about forgetting it or the things you have to do associated with it. Yeah. So that takes some of that worry yeah. away too. And it and it is pretty handy. You know, we have our ho- our phones with us because mm-hmm. a lot of times I'll write down a to-do list and then it where did I lost. put it? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. But I there's I'm old school. Yeah, I, I still yeah. like <laughs> I still like that paper yeah. in that box and that check mark there. Yeah. All right. Well, to each their own. What works for us right. might not work for you, but that's hey, you right. were made for this and you, you know what's going to work for your yourself and for your family. That's too. right. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Zygernick, or whatever your name was, that started the ball rolling on that so that, that I'd have a better grasp of how to use a to-do list to free up my mind uh, in a way to not feel so overwhelmed. Mm. Well, when we come back, we want to share a really neat experience that we got to have this last month at a local church and just tell you that and encourage you that you're not alone in this. KTSY presents the all-new Stories Unveiled podcast, hosted by Ashley Sears, where she invites guests to discuss how God is impacting their lives right here in the Treasure Valley. We talk about the purpose in every story and how to live in freedom from your past. Each episode, you're invited into a conversation about real life. If an issue is addressed in the Bible, then it's important to create a safe and supportive space to discuss it. New episodes of the Stories Unveiled podcast are now available at ktsy.org slash podcasts or listen at all major podcast providers. The Stories Unveiled podcast is created in partnership with KTSY and Barefoot Media Ministries. For more encouragement and other podcasts, visit ktsy.org. We had such an amazing opportunity. Oh my goodness. We got to go be with the ladies at Restored Community Church in Eagle, Idaho, and it was such a blessing. Oh, we were invited to come speak just about how God fills up our cup. And I have to be honest, I just felt like God was filling up my cup by being in the presence of of these women that so clearly adore and love Jesus and yeah. are walking with him. Yeah. I Wasn't cannot it just believe it. So cool. Oh, it was so cool. I got to tell you one of the things that happened and it was so neat. This uh, church, it, it, it held about 150 in the room that we were in. It was packed with women. And as Bree and I were sharing, oh, it was just cool because they would say, oh, yes, yes. Oh, amen. And, and, oh, tell me more, you know, what were some of the other things they were saying? It was just so cool. It wasn't, it wasn't like interrupting. It wasn't disruptive at all. It was just encouraging. Like I was sitting there with a bunch of my sisters Mm. who had had similar experiences and I felt like, wow, we're not alone. Yeah. Lots of really cool things happened, but one thing really stood out. Just a, just a couple of minutes that really made such a difference. I loved, we had some time where just the women got to know each other, got to walk around the room and ask each other what their passion was or, you know, what's something that they um, are gifted in that God is allowing them to use to glorify himself. And one of the ladies, she had just graduated from the American Sign Language Academy. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but She was so excited. It's a big deal. Big deal. She has worked really hard for this. 
And so mom, you just <laughs> put her on the spot. I did. She was so gracious. She was. You asked her to, to sign something for us. Yeah, yeah. And um, we had just been talking about that verse, you know, reminding us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And so she stood up and signed that verse. We didn't know what she was saying, but I think there wasn't a dry eye in the whole crowd because it was just so beautiful. And you could tell the love and emotion Mm -hmm. that she was putting into it. And so then when we knew what she had just (laughs) signed, everyone was just overflowing, you know, with just feeling, feeling beautiful, feeling wonderful, feeling like they were made by their creator for a purpose. And it was just an incredible moment. I just wanted to encourage you though. One of the most amazing things and blessings of mom and I getting to go out and speak um, with you and be in our community and talk is the people that come up to us afterwards. And I just want to tell you, you are not alone in this. There are so many moms who are out there loving, praying, Asking God from the bottom of their heart to heal their homes. Yeah. Because there's just a lot of brokenness right now. And everyone's story is different. Everyone's home is different. Every challenge is different. Yet the heart and the desire to grow closer to their creator and to know that he sees them and he loves them and he will equip them and help them and that it is possible for their home to become a place of healing and restoration instead of brokenness or in the midst of brokenness or out of brokenness, whatever it is, there are so many of us that are feeling this way. And there are so many who have walked through that journey. And can be testifying to the truth yes, that, that you are not alone and that with God, there is a way. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a blessing beyond measure. And we thank Restored Community Church. And we've been able to speak at several churches and each one different, each one a blessing, and each one encouraging us that the Lord is with us. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, we hope you're encouraged today, too. Mm-hmm. And we're glad that you were with us for today's podcast on A Home That Heals. We like to see you as you pop on to our social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, we have our website that has information there, more information and how to get in touch with us. And so please be part of our community. We thank KTSY for making all of this possible. Just a great place to be where you can always hear hope. A Home That Heals is produced in partnership with 89.5 KTSY. To find out more about them, go to ktsy.org.